Dr. Emmanuel K. Chibodi. I'm the Honorable Commissioner for Health of the Enugu State Ministry of Health, Enugu State Government in Enugu State. Recently, there have been reports about strange deaths that have been occurring in Enugu State, specifically in some communities that have boundaries with some other states of uh, with some other states with Enugu State. These states are Benue and Kogi, and the communities specifically are the Ete community and the Umoku community of Igwe is a not local government of Enugu State. Now these communities exist in some wards, the Ete Ward 2 and the Umozi Ward of Enugu State in the Igwe is a not local government. Now these strange deaths have been reported and they have recently reached the news and there have been a cause of worry amongst our people and amongst people who have also been reporting from outside Enugu State. I want to stand clearly to state that since those reports were made, the Enugu State Ministry of Health swung into action and immediately started investigating what could be the possible causes of these deaths. I can assure you that the State Ministry of Health carried out on-the-spot checks in these communities and were able to determine a few epidemiological features of these communities. Within these communities, they are predominantly farmers. They have been reporting these disease conditions and unfortunately, despite the existence of public health facilities within these places, we are also been getting reports of poor health seeking behavior by the people in these communities. Incidentally, with the reports, the Ministry of Health swung into action and went to visit these communities to carry out a clinical assessment, an on-the-spot check and epidemiological study of the situation. What was discovered was that there were patients who had died and they were reported to have shown certain symptoms. Some of the symptoms were fever, yellowness of the eyes, bleeding some form of the orifices of the body, and then conditions like diarrhea and even convulsions. Incidentally, this led to some panic within the communities and then gradually the reports started filtering out. The minute these reports reached the public health facilities, the system that is in place, which is the um, disease surveillance and network system swung into action. Public health facilities received reports. They carried out preliminary assessment of their patients and discovered that they were looking at fevers that could not be explained. These fevers caused them to carry out investigations. The usual investigations did not reveal the proper things that they normally see. So the disease surveillance and network and notification officers of local government were communicated. That is, the local government received the reports. From the local government, these reports were now sent to the state. This is what premeditated the actions from the State Ministry of Health. The state Ministry of Health sent its state epidemiologist and its rapid response team to engage with the rapid response team at the local government. And the outbreak investigation started. Since the outbreak investigation, members of the community have been, have been engaged with the local government chairman has been engaged with and stakeholders have come and discussed and subsequently we started to ensure that proper management of these cases symptomatically was being carried out within the health facilities and then we started to carry out risk communication with members of the community informing them about the health promotional methods that are standard personal hygiene which we have been promoting since with the covid 19 and we also started to talk around the things that could be related to this disease because the symptoms were pointing at a disease of public health importance, a group of diseases. We started to promote against this group of diseases. For example, the normal personal hygiene we have been promoting for COVID-19, we started to enhance the information about this. We started to invite people to protect their food because protection of food from uh, access to rodents is very important at times like this. We also went ahead to start teaching people how to ensure that they protect themselves from contact with vectors like mosquitoes. Some of the things we said was that it was important to allow to, for people to screen their doors and windows and to wear protective clothing to protect themselves from bites from mosquitoes. Subsequently, we took samples from the people who were ill in these communities and we sent these samples to the National Reference Laboratory in Abuja. 
we want to thank at this time some of the organizations that swung into action with us. The WHO, the African Center for Disease Control, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control. They all swung into action and we went to these communities together. On assessing this, we started to also assess the readiness of several facilities around the community for their readiness for a possible epidemic. While taking these other actions, we were eagerly waiting for the test result to come out. I want to inform the people of Enugu State that the results are out. We are dealing with a case of yellow fever. Yellow fever is a viral disease. It belongs to the group of viral hemorrhagic fevers. But I must let you people know, yellow fever is not a new disease because yellow fever is one of the diseases that exists amongst the normal diseases that we carry out routine and mass immunizations for. Yellow fever is caused by flavivirus, and usually it will give you certain symptoms like the ones that we have seen. A fever, sudden onset of fever, yellowness of the eyes, which will occur within 14 days of the first onset of the symptoms. Usually it will take about three to six days for you to start to see the symptoms from the point of infection. Now, yellow fever is known to occur in cycles and it is transmitted by a mosquito. The certain species of mosquito is the Edis or the Hemogogus species of mosquitoes. They usually exist around places where you have thick forests or jungles close to them. There are several cycles of yellow fever uh, occurrence. Sometimes you have it occurring within monkeys, from monkey to monkey. Then sometimes when people have to walk or pass through jungles or thick forests or farm, then these mosquitoes can bite these people and then you have the animal to human transmission. Yellow fever can lead to a more toxic illness that can lead to bleeding from orifices of the body, convulsions, and other very serious states of unwell. And unfortunately, this can lead to death. But I must assure you that it's just about 15% of cases that will eventually lead to death. When you are dealing with yellow fever, the treatment is essentially supportive. Supportive meaning that the patients will be managed properly. If they get dehydrated, the hydration will be treated. They can be covered with antibiotics and all other little things that may occur will be treated supportively. Our healthcare professionals are trained to handle cases of yellow fever. That is for the treatment. The preventive things that can be done for yellow fever is that people should comply with routine immunization. And then whenever there is a report for mass immunizations for things like yellow fever, we employ our people to make themselves available to get this very important immunization. This is not a time for panic. This is a time for us to also bring our hands together and work together to once more push away a disease condition that is being reported. We are collaborating with the Federal Ministry of Health all other stakeholders, like I've said before, the WHO, the Federal Ministry of Health, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, and other organizations that have also come to have meetings with us. The disease was specifically diagnosed today, which is the 7th of November, 2020. We received reports from the samples that we are sent to the NCDC, and they clearly diagnosed verifiably that this is yellow fever. We are currently at the Emergency Operations Center of the Enugu State Ministry of Health, holding a high-powered meeting with the NCDC, the WHO, the African CDC, the Red Cross, and the Ministry of Health. What we are doing is clearly delineating the very specific next steps that the state government and the state Ministry of Health must institute to be able to take care of this report as we have had it. From this meeting, we are going to get a high-powered letter that will go to the government. With the approvals from government, we will swing into action and start to take care. A very important message to our people right now is this. 
this is a time to ensure that beyond personal hygiene, you also institute environmental hygiene. This is not a time for you to leave containers or a dirty environment that could collect water and form breeding places for mosquitoes around your houses. This is a time for you to also ensure that you have screens on your windows and on your doors to prevent mosquitoes from getting into your home. This is a time for you to wear clothes, like I'm wearing now, long sleeves, that will prevent mosquitoes from having easy contact with your bodies and biting you. Most importantly, this is a time when if you see the symptom of a sudden onset fever or and jaundice, which is the yellowness of the eyes, occurring within 14 days of that fever, this is a time for you to take that person, a loved one, a stranger, or yourself presenting with these symptoms to the nearest hospital and report. Because once you report to the hospital, you have entered the Enugu State Healthcare System and you will be taken care of. Thank you.